Welcome to Dr. Gene Original. I'm Dr. Gene. On this show, we talk to torn families and bring back the love. Today, we have family, a family that was torn by a generational divide. This family was given $10,000 from a life insurance, and every family member has a different dream to how to spend it. The circumstances of their generations have impacted the way each of them want to spend the money. Let's meet the family. <laughs> I'm Mama, and I want to take pride in my family. I'm Anika, and I want to be a doctor. I'm Walter, and I want to open up a liquor store to make some money. I'm Ruth, and I love my family. Ruth, please join us. Thank you for being with us. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm fine, thank you. So, is there anything new with you? Well, not really. Other than the fact that I'm pregnant. <gasps> Congratulations! Uh, and have no idea how to raise this child in a healthy environment. I mean, I can hardly give Travis a bed to sleep in. How, how am I supposed to do that? Not to mention that Walter and I have been fighting again. Now that is a problem. So, have you put any thought into what you're going to do? Not really. Well, my family recently got a $10,000 insurance check, and hopefully that will help the family and the baby. I understand your stance. Now let's bring out our sister-in-law, Benita, and see what, how she is feeling. Benita, please come out. Thank you for coming to our show. It's a pleasure to meet you. Well, I did have to take time out of my day, but I guess I'll manage. I understand that you are a student and an aspiring doctor. Yeah, I'm this family's only glimpse of hope to overcome poverty. That's why the money should be spent on my education. I see. Would you say it's tough being an African-American woman aspiring to be a doctor? Well, I'm going to be a doctor, and everybody around here better understand that. There are too many stereotypes in this world. It's about time someone breaks through these dated racial and gender roles. Well, hey now, let's simmer down. I'm just sick and tired of everybody telling me what I'm supposed to do and how I'm supposed to act. Find a rich guy, marry him, act ladylike, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to be an intellectual, and everybody's going to have to deal with that. Your generation is breaking the status quo, and it seems like you are at the front of it. I like that about you, Miss Benita. Thank you for your openness. Now, let's bring out Mama. With us now is Lena, Lena Younger, or more commonly known as Mama. Lena, will you please tell us your version of the American dream and the motivations behind this? If you, if you could also describe to us what you aspire to do with the $10,000 you received after the death of your husband. For me, that $10,000 is nothing in comparison to what I lost. Big Walter meant so much more to me than that money. Family means so much more to me than that money. To me, family is a priority we all need to make, and Lord knows we don't, all don't make it nowadays as much as we should. Big Walter and I's version of the American dream was to buy a house and to take family pride in the things that we did have. Because of this, do you feel a generational difference has been outlined between you and your children? Well, of course. They should be looking out, out for what's truly important, family. They shouldn't be just looking out for what's important to them, like my daughter Benita or just going after money like my son, Walter. Do you think your children understand your perspective on the American dream? Or are they just as confused as you are? Lord only knows what those two think. I sure hope they come to understand my perspective on things pretty soon. It will relieve a great burden on all of us. Thank you for your time, Mrs. Younger. Up next, we have your son, Walter. Hi, Walter. Hello. How are you doing today? Well, I'm doing all right. Well, actually, I'm not doing too great. You see, no one understands me. No one understands my needs. Not even my own family. Not even my own wife. I'm just looking for a little support, a little faith in my dreams. You see, this morning, I was looking in the mirror, and I was thinking, I'm 35 years old. I've been married 11 years, and we've got a boy who sleeps in the living room. All I've got to tell him is how rich white people live. And you know what my wife tells me? She just tells me to eat my eggs. I ain't got no help in this world. I just want to be the man, provide for my family. And that's why I've been wanting this liquor store of mine. I won't have to work for any white man no more. What do you think this liquor store will do for you exactly? 
and your relationship with your wife and son. Can't you see? Of course you can. Let me lay this out for you. Ruth will come down the stairs and meet me at the door and kiss me, and we'll go into my son's room, and we'll see him on the floor looking at catalogs of all the greatest schools in America, all the schools in the world. I'll say, all right, son, it's your 17th birthday. Just let me know what you've decided, and you can go. You just got to let me know. You just name it, son, and I'll hand you the world. I just want to provide for my family now, you see? Yes, I do. And Walter, don't I have some good news for you coming up. Just like any mother and daughter, Lena and Vanita don't always see eye to eye, but their very different situations growing up enhance the misunderstandings. We will bring Lena, or Mama as we like to call her, and Vanita on the stage together to try and work out some of their problems. All right, let's begin with Mama. Mama, will you please tell us your perspective on the situation at hand involving your daughter and the misunderstandings between you two? Well, sometimes I feel like Manita loses sight of what's important in life. She puts herself in front of her family and in front of God. My Lord, you need Jesus. Can you just stop with the God, please? Well, God is what gave you everything you have in life. Benita, how dare you? Back in my day, we were happy if God gave us freedom. And now you're trying to take so much of him. Spoiled brat. I mean it. I'm just tired of hearing about God all the time. What has he got to do with anything? Does he pay the tuition? Whoa there. Let's all calm down. How have I, how have I raised such an ungrateful, unselfish daughter? You're always running around spending money on your stupid hobbies when we can barely afford to pay for our family. And turning down a nice young man like George, my lord. Mama, I'm just trying to find myself, and I don't love George. I love Asaga because he's a free thinker, not some stuck-up businessman. He's the type of person that I want to become, and I love him. I think our audience has heard enough, and it's very apparent Mama's traditional views and your modern ones clash, but this does not mean you two cannot be friendly. Please welcome to the stage, Mother and Son, Lena and Walter Younger. I've heard both of your sides of the story, and I have one question for you. Walter, why don't you tell your mom? Look, I have big dreams that can change this family. I'm just looking to take care of everyone. You two money-oriented. You something new, boy. In my time, we was worried about not getting lynched and getting to the north, if we could, and how to stay alive, and still have a pinch of dignity, too. Now here you and Benita are, talking about things we ain't never thought of. Hardly. You ain't even satisfied or proud of nothing. This isn't easy for me. I'm the man of the house, or at least I should be. I have a son sleeping on the couch every night. I don't like that. I should be supporting you. You should not be supporting me. Oh, son, we are a family, and we are supposed to help one another out. I understand this isn't easy for you. Lena, I have learned from my producer that you have some news to share with this audience. Listen to me now. I say I've been wrong, son that I've been doing to you what the rest of the world has been doing to you. What, what do you say, Mama? I paid that man $35,000 down on the house, and that leaves $65,000. I'm saying that Monday morning, I want you to take the money and the $3,000 put in a saving account for Benita's medical schooling, and the rest of you, you put into a checking account with your name out of it. Oh my God, Mama, are you serious? Yeah! It's amazing! What a way! It's amazing! The whole family is back together. <laughs> Even though the, the way Mama was raised was different from their children, which caused a divide, they were able to reconcile their differences. Thanks for watching Fourth Hour, and we'll see you on another even day. Dr. Generational signing off. Bye! Bye. Yeah. <laughs>